Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to be discussing power effect of induction voltage. In this video, we are going to review the basics of power effect. What is power effect of induction voltage at full load and at no load? And why power effect of induction voltage is not very high? And we'll compare power factor of different induction motors. If you take a look at a nameplate of an induction motor, you can see lots of specifications there. But today, we are going to review a one specification, and that is the power fact. What is power fact? Power fact is a measure of how effectively electrical power is being used. It is a unitless number used in alternating current circuits. Mathematically, it is expressed as the ratio of active power to the apparent power. Alright, let's define our terms so that we know what we are talking about. The first type of power that I'm going to discuss is active power. This is the power that performs the actual work of creating heat, light, motion, and so on. Active power is symbolized by the capital letter P and is measured in kilowatts. The other type of power is reactive power. This is so-called non-working power. It doesn't perform any useful work, but it's needed to produce and sustain the magnetic field to enable real work to be done. Reactive power is symbolized by the capitality Q and is measured in kilovolt ampere react. And the last type of power is apparent power. That is the combination of both active and reactive power. Apparent power is measured in the unit of kilovolt amperes and is symbolized by the capital letter S. Alright, let's get back to our induction motor and take a closer look at the motor nameplate. As we can see, this induction motor has the power factor of 0.87. We know the power factor is variable value. As power factor varies with load, the nameplate power factor is set at full motor load. For example, the power factor of this motor is 0.87 with the rated output of 75 kilowatts. This power factor means that 87% of the total power supplied to the machine is performing real work. The rest of the power, 30% to be exact, has to be provided to make up for the reactive power. Reactive power causes additional reactive current to flow across the installation. Like any other AC machine, an induction motor requires that additional current to be drawn from the supply in order to make up and sustain the magnetic field, which rotates the motor. A three-phase induction motor has two main parts, stator and rotor. The rotor is separated from the stator by a small air gap, which ranges from 0.4 mm to 4 mm, depending on the power of the motor. The presence of air gap between the stator and rotor of an induction motor greatly increases the reluctance of the magnetic circuit. Consequently, an induction motor draws a large magnetizing current to produce the required flux in the air gap. Due to the large value of magnetizing current, the power effect of an induction motor seldom exceeds 90%. At no load, an induction motor draws a large magnetizing current and a small active component to meet the no load losses. Therefore, the induction motor takes a high no load current lagging the applied voltage by a large angle. Hence, the power effect of an induction motor on no load is low. And as load is added, the active component of current increases, resulting in higher power effect.
So, and now, let's take a look at a comparison between two induction motors, both have an output of 75 kilowatts and are connected to a three-phase 380 volts power supply system. First mode has a power factor of 0.87 and the second one has a power factor of 0.82. And today we're going to find out how much power each motor will need to draw from the power supply system to provide 75 kilowatts of power. In order to find out how much power it's needed to supply to the machine, we need to calculate the apparent power. We can calculate the apparent power by using power factor formula. So, let me remind you one more time what power factor is. Power factor is the ratio between real and total power in a circuit. And transposing this formula, we can easily get the apparent power. But before that, we need to do some calculations. The example template shows 75 kilowatts, but this doesn't mean the motor actually delivers 75 kilowatts. The actual load will determine the power out of the motor. If the motor is fully loaded, the input to the motor will be larger than the rated power, because the motor has losses. So, we need to know the input power. In order to find out the input power of an induction motor, we need to use the efficiency formula. And transposing this formula, we get in the input power. So, let's take a look at the nameplate of the induction motor one more time and check the efficiency of the motor. The efficiency of the motor is 94%. And substituting the values into the formula, we are getting the input power. The first motor will need to draw 91.9 kV amperes from the power supply assist to provide 75 kW of power. And the second motor will need to draw 97.5 kV amperes from the power supply system to provide the same 75 kW of power. Another way to look at it is that at 82% power effect, the second motor takes more current to do the same work. More current means greater conductor size, so it's going to cost more. More current causes more copper losses, this results in poor efficiency. And more current causes greater voltage drops in power equipment. This will lead to low voltage power in your equipment that may not function properly or at all. 